Hi, I'm Ralph Torres, saxophone and reed product specialist for Andreas Eastman. I am also the tenor saxophonist for a swing band here in Southern California called Fat Cat Swinger. I'm going to go over with you today on how to play swing eighth notes. First, I want to say, regardless of anything that you could see on YouTube or anything I could say for you today, the best thing you can do is go out and listen to people swinging. Count Basie Big Band would be one of the best places to start with. So to save yourself even more time and struggle, you can just go listen to them and it'll be better than anything anyone could tell you. Listening first. But I'm going to try and help you get past with how the mechanics go and how to conceptualize what they're actually doing when they're swinging. A lot of times in beginning big band charts, that's usually where most people first start getting introduced to playing and reading jazz. You'll see in the top left hand corner of the page, it'll be a dotted eighth note and 16th note and they're saying that that's what the, the eighth notes feel like. What they're trying to show you is that the first half of the beat should be longer than the second, but that's really wrong. That rhythm that there, you see often on the top left, that dotted eighth, 16th, that's a shuffle feel and it's the kind of bluesy ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. -ta 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 -ta. It's not really swinging. Um, swing really is more of a triplet feel. And if you're not familiar with what a triplet is, that's when you fit three in the same time as duration of two would be. So in the case of eighth notes, if the quarter note equals one beat, the eighth note would be half a beat each. Instead, a triplet eighth note would be a third of the beat, beat each. So where you would normally count eighth notes as one and two and three and four and in four four time, you would be counting them as triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it, or however you like to count them. Some people say one IO, two IO. So here's the concert B flat C scale and the tenor swung. So how do I achieve that? How do I hear how long the note, the long notes are going to be and how short the short notes are going to be? And for me, that's all about triplets. So on the first note of the scale, I'm just going to do straight eighth notes for four beats. One and two and three and four and. Now I'm going to do four beats of triplets on that one. It'll sound like this. One, 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 one. Now I'm going to slur the first two triplets and then articulate or tongue that third triplet for each three note grouping. Now for the next step, young students are also often taught to accent the upbeat, that short eighth note, the third of the three note grouping, which is technically correct, but I find that when I tell my students that, that oftentimes they'll end up attacking the note and it, they start losing the feel, the swing feel. So instead I tell them just to add some weight to the tongue on those notes. And this is what that would sound like. <laughs> Now for the next step, I'm going to start moving up the scale. Now I'm just going to do three triplets for each tone, which would equal one beat. It would sound like this. One, 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 two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 five. Now I'm going to slur the first two of that three note grouping and articulate or tongue that third one. So it would sound like this. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five. Now I'm going to add the second part, which is that weight on the upbeat. And now for the next step, I'm going to start working my way up the scale in eighth notes, swung eighth notes, where each tone only gets one eighth note. That's going to get a little tricky because some of the notes are going to be longer and some of them are going to be shorter. And the way you figure that out is the downbeat is going to be the long one and the upbeat is going to be the short one. It's going to be that third triplet. And if I'm starting on the first degree of the scale, then every other note is going to be long. And then the second note and every other note thereafter is going to be short. So that if I start on the one, every odd note of the scale is going to be long and every even note is going to be the short one. So it would sound like this. One, two, three, four, five. And to also hear those eighth notes, 
one, one, two, three, three, four, five. And this is what that would sound like without articulating each triplet. Now you can expand on that and go up and down the scale that way. The next step would be if you start on the and. So you're going to start on the short note. That would be like coming in on the and of four, usually into one. So the way I hear that and I think about that is I, I prepare myself one, two, three, as I'm counting those, I'm thinking triplets. One, two, three, four, five, six, four, dun, 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 dun. So I go one, two, three, four, da, da, da. One, two, three, four, da, 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 da. And it just keeps going the same short, long, short, long, short, long, which is the same as long, short, long, short, long, short, long. So it's a good idea to practice each scale starting on the downbeat and starting on the upbeat. Here's what it sounds like starting on the upbeat. One, two, three, four. Now you notice because I flipped them, all the odd notes were the short ones and all the even ones were the long ones. This is good practice for you to do so you don't trip yourself up on which one is long and which one's short. You should always be able to play any scale, any phrase starting them long if they're on the downbeat or starting them short if they're on the upbeat. And as you further your studies in jazz, you'll notice that that triplet starts moving more towards even or even more towards that shuffle feel I was talking about, depending on the style of jazz that you're playing. Uh, when you hear beboppers, Charlie Parker, people like that, they're, they swing. Don't get me wrong, they totally swing, but it's almost even eighth notes because that movie's music's going by so fast. If they swung that much, they would start tripping over themselves and the articulation wouldn't be clean. But that accented weight on the and is always there. Once again, I'm Ralph Torres with Andreas Eastman, and I hope you learned something from that video.